talking about ROP or retinopathy of prematurity. So first of all, a disclaimer. I'm not an ophthalmologist, but I am a neonatologist and I think that I can explain this to you in a way so that you will understand ROP. So we are going to go through different aspects of ROP. First of all, what is ROP? Who gets ROP? Why does ROP develop? How is ROP diagnosed? How is ROP staged? And its overall treatment and prognosis. Okay, so let's start with what is ROP? ROP is retinopathy of prematurity, a disease that only premature infants get. If ROP gets severe enough, it ends up with retinal detachment and therefore has a high chance of ending up with blindness or really affecting the vision. So the only reason why we're screening babies for ROP is to make sure that it never gets to the stage of retinal detachment. The singer, Stevie Wonder, ended up losing his vision because he was a 34-weeker, so a preemie, born before we knew the huge risk factor of developing ROP. He ended up with retinal detachment and therefore unfortunately lost his vision because of that. So who gets ROP? Just like every other three-letter acronym in the NICU, go watch the other video on the three-letter acronyms, ROP occurs more severely as well as more frequently in babies with a lower gestational age as well as smaller babies. So the younger the baby, the smaller the baby, the higher the risk of bad ROP. In fact, all babies born at less than 31 weeks or less than 1500 grams need to be screened for ROP. The other huge risk factor for ROP is having a high oxygen requirement. So if a baby sat on an oscillator or ventilator or even just CPAP at like 100% FiO2 for weeks on end, they have a much higher risk of developing ROP. Also generally just the sicker the baby, if they had more infections, they needed more surgeries, then that can also affect the chance of them developing ROP. Finally, just like everything else in medicine, genetics plays a big role. So babies can sometimes just inherit an increased risk for developing ROP. So if a baby has an older sibling or a twin that developed ROP, even if they just missed the cutoff for needing screening, so if they're like 32 weeks or if they're 1600 grams and their older sibling developed ROP, it might be worth screening them anyway. So why does ROP develop? Let's go over a quick anatomy lesson. The retina is at the layer right at the back of the eye that is responsible for taking the light and converting it through the photoreceptors, which is the rods and the cones, into kind of neural messages, which can then travel to the brain so that it can create an image. So the retina is kind of like the film of the camera. Now, also, I want you to imagine that the eyes are like globes. So imagine them like the back of a beach ball. The retina covers the back portion of the globe. So really, the most posterior aspect back here is kind of the central part of the retina. And that's relevant when we're talking about the zones. So like we said, the retina is made up of loads of the photoreceptors. Normally, when a baby is born at full term, the vascularization of the retina is pretty much complete, which means that the retina has pretty much all the blood supply that it needs. But when a baby is born preterm, the blood supply is still beginning to slowly cover the retina. Where the blood supply comes from is the retinal artery, which comes out right at the most posterior aspect of the eye, right where the optic disc is. Then over the course of pretty much the third trimester, the blood vessels slowly spread over the back of the retina until they're fully vascularizing the retina. So if a baby is still in utero, those blood vessels grow nice and flat along the back of the retina until the retina is fully vascularized. But if a baby is born prematurely and, for example, is really sick or exposed to high amounts of oxygen, then instead of those blood vessels growing out nice and flat, they start to grow forward. And right in front of the retina, we have gel-like substance called posterior vitreous. So if the blood vessels start growing forward into the posterior vitreous, you can imagine that if they get enough grip or enough little blood vessels clawing into that posterior vitreous, then eventually the posterior vitreous, if there's bleeding and scarring, will start pulling on the retina, which should be at the back of the globe. And if it pulls enough, then it will end up with a retinal detachment. So we worry about ROP when there are loads of those little red blood vessels that are growing into the posterior vitreous instead of nice and flat along the back of the retina. So how is ROP diagnosed? 
Ophthalmologists diagnose ROP, they diagnose and treat ROP. Um, ophthalmologists, especially if they're specialized in pediatrics or the retina, and they need to directly visualize the retina. And the way that that is done is very much like any eye exam that you may have done. So the pupils are dilated with special drops. And then using a little contraption to make sure that the eyes stay open, the ophthalmologist will directly visualize the retina and see exactly how those blood vessels are developing, how far out they are, so how much of the retina is fully vascularized, as well as whether they're growing nice and flat or whether they're growing into the posterior vitreous. So like we said, all babies who are born at less than 31 weeks and less than 1500 grams need to be screened for ROP. The first screening needs to be done at either 31 weeks, correct to gestational age, or four weeks age, whichever happens latest. So if a baby is born at 29 weeks, then that baby will be screened at 33 weeks because four weeks is later. If a baby is born at 23 weeks, then that baby will be screened at 31 weeks, correct to gestational age. The ophthalmologist will continue to examine the babies every two weeks or more often than that if they're a bit more concerned until the blood vessels have fully vascularized the eye. So the blood vessels, like we said, slowly creep over the back of the retina until they reach the edge of the retina. When they're fully vascularized and there's no ROP, as in there's no risk of retinal detachment at that point, then the ophthalmologist can clear the babies. So how is ROP staged? Like most things in medicine, the higher the stage, the worse it is. And it, it's exactly the same thing in, with ROP as well. So the higher the stage, the higher the chance of retinal detachment. If a baby has ROP stage zero, they don't have any ROP. The blood vessels are growing completely the way that they would grow in utero. Stage one and two means that the blood vessels are beginning to grow a little bit anteriorly into the posterior vitreous. Stage three is, means that they've really got quite a lot of grip into the posterior vitreous. Stage four is a partial retinal detachment and stage five is a full retinal detachment. So you can imagine that once we reach kind of stage three, then the ophthalmologists are really thinking about starting to treat so that it doesn't progress to a stage four or stage five. Again, we're trying to avoid the retinal detachment. Ophthalmologists also talk about plus disease. Plus disease is when there's increased tortuosity of the blood vessels that are kind of like already grown into the posterior vitreous. So they like become really twisty turny and increases the chance further that there's gonna be bleeding and more scarring and therefore again, a higher risk of retinal detachment. The zones are the opposite. The lower the zone, the scarier it is to have some level of ROP. And that's because the zones start off from zone one, which is the most posterior aspect of the retina. Then zone two is kind of like a bigger circle around zone one. And zone three is the outer circle, which basically means that the blood vessels have nearly reached the edge of the retina. The reason why ROP is so scary in zone one is that zone one, in addition to including the optic nerve, also includes the macula. The center of the macula is called the fovea, and the fovea has the highest concentration of the photoreceptors, the cones, inside the whole retina. So that is where we get the increased sensitivity to our light from. So for example, when you're reading a book and your eyes are scanning from left to right, you are putting your fovea on the letters because that is like the best vision that you have. So you can imagine that we really need to protect vision in zone one, where the fovea is. And so really any ROP in zone one can be very concerning. Zone two, we worry about, you know, obviously a little bit less, and zone three, it's nearly vascularized. So if we have really any ROP, if we have stage two ROP in zone one, it's concerning. And if you have kind of stage three ROP in zone two or zone three, then the ophthalmologists are more concerned that this is gonna need treatment. So let's talk about treatment and prognosis. So like we said, threshold disease is considered when there's a high chance of it developing into a partial retinal detachment. So really stage two in zone one or stage three, especially with plus disease in zone two or zone three. So what do the ophthalmologists do? Really right now, there are kind of two options. The first one is laser treatment, where they're pretty much lasering different areas of the eye kind of more peripherally to kind of pat it down to make sure that a retinal detachment doesn't develop. Or Avastin, which is also called Bevacizumab, which is an anti-endothelial growth factor. So basically they're injecting a little bit of this 
really an immune substance into the back of the eye and preventing any more of the blood vessels from kind of like proliferating as much. So those are kind of like the two established treatments. If the babies are treated and they prevent retinal detachment, then the babies generally have really good prognosis and they have pretty good vision. If you have any level of ROP, then there is an increased chance of having myopia anyway and an increased chance of needing eyeglasses. And really all preemie babies need to be followed routinely. But if you don't end up with retinal detachment, there's still a very good chance that you could have absolutely excellent vision. I hope you learned something today. Remember to please like and subscribe. If you have any more questions about this really complicated topic, then please comment below. Um, otherwise, thank you.